Hello everyone, welcome to the next session on pyroglobosa and here in this presentation we will be looking into in detail the structure of uh, the pila, the morphological features. Uh, when we remove the, on the removal of the shell, uh, the structural features are what we are going to deal with. Uh, the pila, it is a mollusca, gastropodin mollusk and mollusk they are unique in having a soft body, right? The soft body, it is uh, the which is enclosed within the shell, uh, is what you can see in this particular figure. And these, uh, the body, it can be divided into <clears throat> three regions. It can be differentiated into the head, the foot, and the visceral mass, or it is otherwise known as visceral hump. Head, visceral mass, and the foot, right? Uh, head it is the anterior part so this part is the anterior and just the opposite which it's not visible in this figure it is the posterior side uh, this is the ventral and this is the dorsal side okay so head it uh, is the anterior part the foot it is the uh, ventral part while the visceral mass it forms a dorsal and the posterior part okay and another important feature is that the head and the foot they are bilaterally bilaterally symmetrical part of the body while visceral mass uh, it is uh, uh, like twisted, uh, it undergoes torsion, and hence it is uh, spirally coiled and asymmetrical. Okay, and visceral mass always remain within the shell, while the head and the foot, they are often projected out. Okay, uh, while moving the foot is projected out, it is, uh, uh, while uh, like uh, head also you may have seen, the eyes and the tentacles you may have uh, come across in the case of Pida. Uh, projecting out of the shell. Uh, so this is about the uh, basic features. Now, into uh, when we go into detail on the parts associated with the head, uh, head is a fleshy uh, part of the body and it uh, overhangs the foot region uh, on the dorsal side and anteriorly uh, the head is produced into, you can see here, a contractile snout. Okay, uh, protruding part, it is referred as a snout. And this contractile snout, it bears the mouth. Okay, and uh, uh, the just above the mouth, we can see the snout is produced into processes. These processes are uh, generally referred as the tentacles. Uh, you can see here, these uh, tentacles, they are contractile and dorsolateral processes they are lateral and dorsal in position on, on the head region right uh, the first tentacle over here okay, the first pair these are the cephalic tentacles or the anterior tentacles they are referred they are also referred as labial valve and posterior to them you can see another pair of long second pair of tentacles and these are referred as the posterior tentacles or the true tentacles. So cephalic tentacles, they are the anterior tentacles and you have the posterior tentacles, okay, just behind the, uh, the what you call the anterior pair of tentacles. And at the base of each uh, posterior tentacle, you can see a short uh, stumpy stalk, okay, and these are known as omatophore, which bears the eyes, okay, the stalk bearing eyes, it is referred as the omatophore. Okay, or it is otherwise known as the eye stalk. And outer to each, outer in the sense on laterally. Okay, outer to each of the, uh, what you call the omatophore, you can see a structure which is referred as the nuchal lobe, the nuchal lobe or pseudepiporium. Okay, it is known as a pseudepiporium. And these are fleshy lobes found lateral to the tentacles and the omatophore. Okay. Uh, the uh, left and the right pseudepiporium and this connects the head with the mantle right the left nuchal lobe it modifies itself into respiratory siphon when the pila it is on the land okay that is uh, when the animal is on the land the left nuchal lobe uh, it actually extends it rolls to form a tube-like structure and this is what is referred as a respiratory siphon and through this respiratory siphon the atmospheric air it is drawn into the uh, what you call the mantle cavity where the respiration is taking place okay uh, uh, and uh, the here is labial path or the first pair of tentacles uh, as well as the what you call the omatophores 
the posterior tentacles all these three structures okay the first and the second pair of tentacles and the ometophore it can be protruded as well as retracted as and when required by the pilum okay so these are the structures associated with the head region coming to the foot region uh, the foot this is this part is the foot okay here you can see they are ventrally positioned they are strongly muscular and highly contracted and they are greatly modified uh, ventral part of the body which is used for uh, locomotion okay and it is a major, the most prominent locomotory organ in the case of pila uh, it is a broad you can see here uh, the whole creeping sole um, um, flat and modified for creeping movements it has two portions that is propodium and metapodium the propodium it is the anterior part and metapodium the posterior part right the propodium it is the um, principal part in the sense it forms a major part of the uh, food and it is composed of densely packed muscle fibers the uh, what do you call the operculum i hope you remember that operculum it is produced it is secreted by glands associated with food isn't it and the operculum it remains attached to the metapodium that is a posterior part of the food and food it is highly contractile as already mentioned and the muscular uh, contractions it and relaxations it brings about the uh, undulating movements which brings uh, the movement of the food okay and uh, Uh, the foot contains certain glands which are required as pedal glands because of the position on the foot it is known as a pedal glands and these pedal glands they secrete mucus and these mucus secretions it help in uh, easy creeping over the substrate okay so the foot it is divided into two propodium and metapodium depending upon its position the metapodium it is associated with the opercular muscles and it is attached to the operculum the pedal glands they, they are mucus secreting glands uh, which are found on the food region okay coming to the third part which is actually the most uh, actually uh, it uh, uh, that is a major part of the uh, what you call body okay visceral mass or visceral hump as already mentioned they are spirally coiled because of the torsion and it is a what you call a asymmetrical part of the body it contains all the internal organs or it encloses within the internal organs and uh, it is uh, asymmetrical because of the uh, torsion exhibited and as already mentioned uh, this part it completely remains within the body wall and the penultimate wall okay it is completely within the um, shell okay it it is not it doesn't project out through the uh, the mouth the shell mouth okay so this is about the uh, major part of the pila okay now coming to the next part we have is the mantle or mantle cavity okay before that we need to know what is a mantle mantle it is otherwise known as pallium here it is mantle cavity or pallial cavity but it mantle it is otherwise known as pallium okay uh, mantle it is actually a loose skin fold uh, which covers the entire visceral mass and part of the head okay so uh, uh, you can see here this is marked as a mantle right so very um, uh, what you call a thin fold of or loose fold of skin that covers the complete visceral mass uh, as a protective covering and a part of the head region and the mantle is responsible for secreting the shell uh, the anterior margin uh, of the mantle it is thick and fleshy and contains the shell secreting glands and these glands it usually secretes the periostracum and ostracum of the shell and hypostracum it is secreted by the epithelial lining of the mantle okay the nuchal lobes are uh, only the dorsolateral pro uh, projections of the mantle i hope you remember the nuchal lobes okay these are just projections of the mantle so that is why when these um, during the aerobic respiration what happens the left nuchal lobe it just rolls out to form a tube like structure which communicates the uh, mantle cavity with the external environment right here what happens the mantle the mantle it uh, secretes the shell and uh, mainly the two layers of the shell that is a periostracum and uh, ostracum that is outer two layers while the um, hypostracum it is secreted by the epithelial uh, cells of the mantle okay so this is about the mantle coming to the mantle cavity right the mantle ca it, the, the part of the mantle that is enveloped that uh, uh, that envelops the anterior part of the body 
it is what is referred as a mantle cavity okay uh, that is the part of the mantle which covers the anterior part of the body it encloses a small space okay actually a larger space uh, and this space is what is referred as a pallial or the mantle cavity okay the space which is which is actually enclosed within the mantle okay and usually found uh, associated with the visceral mass okay that part is known as the mantle cavity and mantle cavity has two portions uh, uh, the sorry um, branchial chamber as well as the pulmonary chamber and the, the branchial chamber uh, it is the smaller portion and this part okay this part is the branchial chamber comparatively smaller and uh, uh, it is um, like the right part of the mantle okay and the larger left portion okay coming from over here the rest of the mantle cavity it is larger and it is uh, uh, positioned towards the left side and that forms the pulmonary chamber why the names because branchial chamber is the part which contains the the tenedium or it houses the gills okay so here you can see this is the tenedium and tenedium is found in the branchial chamber okay while pulmonary chamber it contains the lungs or the pulmonary sac okay so branchial chamber it contains the gill and the pulmonary chamber contains a pulmonary sac and a structure which is known as the ostradium so this is known as the ostradium this is what how it looks like now the uh, mantle cavity also we can see uh, several other structures like epithelium then genital duct rectum etc so all these structures placed inside the mantle cavity forms the complete the mantle cap uh, mantle uh, complex um, or the pallial complex the whole structures associated with the mantle cavity so these are the structures which are found inside the mantle cavity but the complete uh, complex of these organs together form mantle complex or the pallial complex i hope it is clear mantle cavity is the space which is occupied uh, which, which is actually housed within the mantle at the uh, visceral mass region okay so the uh, the part of the mantle uh, enveloping the anterior part of the body occupy, uh, encloses a larger space and this space is what is referred as the mantle cavity or the pallial cavity and you can see there are plenty of structures found inside the mantle cavity all these structures placed in the uh, what you call mantle cavity together form what is referred as a mantle complex or the pallial complex okay now what are the structures you can see 